in science, you always have a story that you're telling yourself about what you think is happening. And so you run an experiment. If it doesn't work out the way you think it should work out, it's either because you're physically doing something wrong or your story is wrong. Science is just basically accumulated stories of how things work. And you always have to put them to the test. I love coming in and, hey, this isn't working. This is a problem. How can we make it better? It kind of goes back to who I am as a person. I like to fix things. I like to see things get improved. And that's where I get my satisfaction. If it wasn't for science, I'd probably be a car mechanic. I chose pharma because, well, my, my mother had died of cancer when I was very young, and this was my way of getting revenge on cancer, I guess. I was 10 years old. She had it for two years, and it spread out of her breasts into her bones. You know, this was back in 1978 when she died, so there, was, there wasn't anything they could do. It was many, many years later that I decided, yeah, this is something that I can do. This is something that I want to do. I'm a principal process engineer in the MSAT laboratory group. We're responsible for making sure that the recipes we use to make drugs are robust. We define a recipe. We define the limits that each variable or parameter in the recipe can have. We know that as long as we stay within those boundaries, we'll make the same drug every time. The disease is called SMA. It's spinal muscular atrophy. Children are born, and in their genetic code, there is a defective copy of an enzyme, which is essential for the development of their nervous system. Without this enzyme working properly, they basically don't have control over their muscles. We created a vector to deliver a functioning copy of the gene where it's needed. That's really powerful, you know, to see these little kids who are, who are surviving because of it. My son just turned six. We talk about things all the time, how the world works, how things change, you know, from liquid to solid to gas. We talk about fire, combustion, how gasoline works. Yeah, I mean, he's a kid, he just loves understanding everything. My wife, she's worked at a couple hospitals over the years, and now that we're out in Colorado, she does in-home care. I think it's a great synergy. To be able to give caregivers the tools they need to make a difference is really amazing. I work in Longmont, which is just north of Denver. It's right about where the plains of the Midwest hit the Rocky Mountains. We like to get out, we like to bike together, and we just discovered a new trail the other day that we were biking up together, and just had so much fun. We love to explore the mountains. There's lots of woods and rocks to play around in. Oh, it's beautiful. The air is very clear. It's always sunny out here. The views are amazing. It's a conducive environment to creative thinking. Even in simple things in science, it's sometimes very difficult to travel a straight path from where you are to where you think you need to be. So there's a lot of meandering, there's a lot of trying things and having it not work. That's how you learn things. I always talk about the quote from Edison about having a thousand failures before you got a working light bulb. I don't know if I could last that long, but you just keep trying. Creativity is a very high proportion of my job. Pretty frequently, I'm working on thinking how things are working and asking myself, is this good enough or can we do better? And how could we do better? And also talking to other people and seeing what they think and trying to take the best ideas and run with them. Science works because people drive it, people make it happen. It'll only ever be as good as the people who choose to do it.